The new fully electric Hyundai Ioniq 6 is one of the most polarizing designs of 2023. People either really love it or really dislike it. But regardless of what you think of the design, I am here to tell you that this car is one of the best new EVs on the market. And in this video, I'm gonna make my case for the Ioniq 6. And we're gonna talk about all the crazy gadgets and gizmos. Let's get the elephant in the room out of the way first because the design on this car is certainly unique. Now it's primarily driven by aerodynamics, but there's a really interesting story behind why this car looks the way it does. On the launch of this car, the chief designer gave a presentation and the story is really cool. So his boss came to him one day and said, my son sent me a picture of a really cool car. I think we should use it as a design inspiration. And that car is probably something you've never heard of. It's called the Stout Scarab. Now the Stout Scarab was the brainchild of a journalist actually named William Stout who wanted to design a better automobile. And in the mid 1930s, he came up with the concept and actually produced about nine futuristic looking cars. They were powered by a rear mounted Ford V8 with this crazy design and this belt line that swooped downward toward the rear, just like the Ionic 6. Now the design never reached its full potential. William Stout unfortunately passed away, but his legacy can still be seen in the Ionic 6. One of the most frequently used design motives behind the entire Ionic 6, as well as its sibling car, the Ionic 5, are these little pixels. All throughout the car, you'll find tiny squares. You see them in the front here in the headlight that make up the turn signals. You also see them down here on the nose, and it's a really cool look, and we'll see those throughout the interior as well. But I wanna point out something really interesting on the front of the Ionic 6. There is no visible air inlet for the radiator. Even on an electric car, you still need some cooling and electric vehicles that are liquid cooled still have a radiator in the front. But where does the air come in? Well, it actually comes in through these active grill shutters, which open up when they're needed, but close up for additional aero when they're not. This car uses powered door handles, so you can see the car is unlocked, they're open, but then when you lock the car, which you can do by pushing this button here, or by using the key, they fold in. And of course, when you're driving along, they also fold in for maximum aerodynamics. To unlock it, I can push the center, and then the door handle will fold out and we're ready to go. Now, in the event of a power failure, there is a little keyhole back here so I can manually open up the car, but it's a very flush design and looks pretty cool. And I do want to talk about the key for a second because this key is one of the most unique in the industry. It's this perfect silver little egg with these light blue buttons and then some additional silver buttons on the side. And then the manual key actually lives separate from the fob in this little blue pouch. Pull it out, there you've got your manual key, and then keep it away for safekeeping. The rear of the Ionic 6 is personally my favorite angle. Now there is a lot going on, starting with this two wing setup, this larger black portion, and then this smaller silver portion. And the black wing actually has a clear acrylic panel with these little pixels, and that lights up as the chimsel, the center high mounted stoplight. Other things at the rear of this vehicle, long continuous light bar, once again filled in with individual pixels. I like these two streaks down at the base of the bumper. And then if you look carefully, lots of attention to aerodynamics. You've got these little square bits molded into the tail light and the bumper just to gain every possible wind advantage. One really subtle feature I've noticed on the Ionic 6, which you might not ever notice unless you watch this video, is related to the shark fin antenna in the back. Now, typically this is just a black or body colored piece of plastic, but this is actually a darkened clear piece of plastic. You can actually see through it and see all the little bits and bobs in there, which I think is really cool. It's very like early 2000s, a uh, Mac, but I, I just love that. I think it's really neat. As you step inside the Ionic 6, one of the first things you notice is the door panel. Now a door panel is a part of a car that a lot of manufacturers typically don't put a lot of work into. Oftentimes it's just some black plastic thing, but in the Ionic 6, you've got this really wonderful, almost corrugated material on the upper portion of the door. This huge Bose speaker down here, nice soft materials throughout, and then of course the silver door panel. But one thing is clearly missing. 
the window switch. It's nowhere to be seen, not in the crack, not down here on the speaker, and that's because the window switches in the Ionic 6 are actually in the middle. Hyundai said they did this to preserve the nice looking integrity of the door panel, but it's one of, I think, only two other vehicles sold here in the US, the Wrangler and the Bronco, with window switches in the middle. What I do find to be a little bit odd about this explanation is that when you come to the rear door, you still have the nice design door panel with the nice corrugated material here in the soft materials, except the window switch is in the normal place. So uh, in the front, it's down the center stack. In the rear, it's on the door as you'd expect. The charge flap on the Ionic 6 is located here on the right rear quarter panel. Now it looks like a standard circular flap, except when you push in on these six little pixels, it glides open electrically. Now inside the charge flap, you do have your J1772 port, as well as your CCS dongle here. And this car is rated at 270 miles on a single charge as equipped with all wheel drive and just about every option. Uh, but you can get one with over 300 miles of range if you get a rear wheel drive spec. And the charge rate is so impressive on this car, 80% uh, in under 20 minutes if you're on the right charger, which is crazy. Now, other cool things in here, you have these little lights, which let you know the general charge of the vehicle. And then of course you can push to close it. But I do worry, is this going to be a failure your point at some point in the future. Now I want to talk really quickly about this paint, this beautiful kind of matte silver. Looks great, but a couple downsides. You have to avoid uh, brushed car washes, of course, and if you get a scratch on one panel on the side of the car, they typically have to repaint the whole side because it's almost impossible to match a, 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 a matte paint color. That's pretty interesting. Now, as you step inside the Ionic 6, lots of cool things to discuss in here, starting with how airy it initially feels. And part of that is down to the completely flat floor. This car rides on the EGMP platform, which is also what underpins the uh, EV6 by Kia, and of course the Ionic 5. But because it's completely flat, it means they can do stuff like have this floating center console, which is a great place to put, for example, your purse or maybe a small set of groceries. That is a really nice feature. One of the first things I notice when I step behind the wheel of this car is the really unique steering wheel design. Most cars have a three spoke or a four spoke steering wheel, not the Ionic 6. It's actually a two spoke design with buttons on the left and the right side of the steering wheel and then a drive mode selector here in the middle and these four little pixels across the center. Now those four pixels are actually Morse code for H. H, of course, Hyundai, and in the Ionic 6, they light up and they change colors. For example, when I change the mode, they blink different colors, and it's a really cool look. Shifting the Ionic 6 into drive is not your typical process. You might expect a big chunky lever or maybe a column shifter like some of the Germans are doing, or perhaps a series of buttons. But on this car, there is this stock, a third stock, which sticks out toward the base of the steering wheel. You twist it forward for drive, backwards for reverse, and uh, you know, a middle position for neutral, and then a button at the end for park. All right, a quick POV drive behind the wheel of the Ionic 6, starting in the normal mode. Now, one thing which I've noticed about this car is that the acceleration depends greatly uh, on the mode that you have selected. So in the normal mode, I'll come to a stop here. We've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit, no one behind us. Full stop, and I'm gonna go hard on the accelerator now. You know, good push off the line, and then it's more gradual as you hit the higher speeds. And then once you're at cruising speed, it's pretty slow to respond to really accelerate unless you go into the sport mode. And then you really get that instant push that you come to expect out of an electric vehicle. Now, 320 horsepower is impressive. You know, it's not gonna beat a Model 3 performance by any means off the line, but it still is a very fun car to drive, especially when you dial it into that sport mode. One of the more unusual features on the inside of this Ionic 6 are these wings which poke up at the sides of the dashboard. Now it's a cool design feature, but you're probably wondering why are they there? Well, in other markets such as Europe, for example, you can actually get this car with camera mirrors which integrate into these little wings. That's such a good idea. Unfortunately, the US is super behind on our camera and mirror legislation. So here in the US, you just get these black plastic wings. Now from a handling standpoint, this car is what I would describe as a little numb. The suspension movements, the steering precision especially, right? It's not unsafe by any stretch of the imagination, but there's just no communication coming through any of the controls. It all just kind of does its own thing, and you know, you feel safe and in control, but it certainly isn't what I would call a fun car to drive around some corners. It's safe, it's controlled, it's comfortable, especially on a road trip, but it's not exactly lively. 
So most of the controls on this car can be found on two screens. We have two 12.3 inch screens and the one in front of the driver is really clear, really crisp, tells you your state of charge, um, what regen setting you're in, your economy, that kind of thing. You can actually change the look depending on the mode. And you've got these two shoots which kind of jut out toward the front of the car and the screens. Makes it feel like you're uh, pouting the Starship Enterprise, but it's a good look, very functional. The main screen in the Ionic 6 is also a 12.3 inch screen full of really great information. It's got a great camera system in this car, full 360 degree. You can actually pan around the car and uh, yeah, it looks really quite good. Um, now this screen in this car has been a little bit glitchy over the past uh, week of testing. For example, the media button just isn't working. It just pulls up these panels that kind of flash at me and some of the radio screens have also been kind of intermittent. But the Ionic system I've used in the 5 has been really good. I'm hoping that the issues are just relegated to this one particular test car, which is granted an early production model. One thing I do love that Hyundai incorporates are the turn signal mirrors, or the turn signal cameras, excuse me, so that when I turn on the turn signal, I know who's in my blind spot. Quick squirt of acceleration, a little bit of rear bias there, up to the speed limit of 60 miles an hour. Yeah, not that quick in the normal mode, but certainly quick enough. Hyundai has nailed the autonomous functionality on this car. Um, of course, I've got my distance control here, and then I've got my lane centering, and you can operate those separate from the cruise control, and it's just such a good system. Hyundai system is really smart. It can actually um, uh, pick a position in a lane if you're like trying to avoid a truck, for example. It really is a great system, very effective, one of the best in the industry. Below the main touchscreen, you'll actually find a secondary display, which is used for your climate setting. You've got dual zone automatic climate controls, and it's very easy to use, very intuitive three speeds of auto and then there's shortcuts too to turn on the heated steering wheel and the heated seats um it's a good system you know i would prefer physical buttons but there are physical buttons above the screen it's uh, as shortcuts for the map the nav the media and then there's also a favorites button but there's also a hard control for the volume and the tune and the camera which i like this system a lot more than like the ev6 where you can toggle back and forth between climate control or audio but not both some other things I noticed driving the Ionic 6, it's very similar to its cousin, the 5. Uh, it feels a little lower, a little bit more sporty, I think. I'd be more comfortable taking this on some really tight turns and some, you know, fun drives. But it's a very similar driving experience, very isolated, very quiet at speed. This car would be an excellent road tripper. Set the cruise, you know, you set the auto steer, you utilize that insane charging speed, and you just hit the road. And I also love the paddle shift uh, functionality that um, Hyundai has incorporated. I'm on cruise. Let me take it off cruise, but we have really four levels of regen from zero, where when you let off the accelerator, nothing happens, all the way up to iPedal. And what iPedal does is it actually watches the car in front of you and will slow down according to the car in front of you, all by itself, adding that electricity back into the battery to maximize the regen. Hyundai has nailed that system. I wish it would stay in iPedal every time I get in the car. That's something you do have to pay attention to, but it is a really nice system to have. One of the things that I think Hyundai has finally perfected in this Ionic 6 is the wireless charger. I struggle with wireless chargers so much in a lot of these test cars, especially with the newer iPhones that have the cameras that stick out. But in this car, you've got a little cheat tray which rises above the surrounding plastic. And I've had a 100% charge rate in this car and it's fast and you get these little lights that illuminate down here when your phone is charging. That was a really well done piece of technology. Stepping into the rear seat of this car, the first thing you notice is the sheer amount of legroom. I've got tons of it. This is like Mercedes S-Class amount of legroom back here. And then of course that completely flat floor, which is just incredible, but not a lot of headroom. At six feet tall in my driving position, of course, I am hitting the roof and that's due to that sloping roof line. And I'd also like to see the option for a full panoramic sunroof, not just this small one. Back here, of course, you also have a little um, center mounted armrest here, a couple of cup holders, two USB port it's a good back seat I could just use a little bit more headroom one aspect of this car which I do find to be a little unusual in 2023 is that this car is a conventional sedan with the trunk so I would like to see the whole hatch open up but of course you just get your standard trunk nothing too much to talk about back here you do have uh, controls to put down the seats but it's just a fairly standard trunk I do love the V2L vehicle to load capability of this car. There's an outlet underneath the seat, which provides a lot of electricity. You can also get a dongle that plugs into the charge port to power stuff on a campground, or if you have like an emergency, you need to power some stuff at your house. That's really nice. Um, the, the one under the seat is very useful, just not super accessible, but it puts out like over 2KW. It's pretty juicy. So does the Ionic 6 have a front trunk? Well, let's find out. Manual release to open up the front panel. 
And then when you do so, there should be one more catch here. You find yourself a front cubby, or as I call it, a frubby. Now the Ionic 5 I last tested had a little cover which you can open up. This is not a super amount of useful space, but you do have access to your fluids and of course your 12 volt in here. Overall, I feel that Hyundai has done a great job with this new Ionic 6. I understand the looks aren't for everybody, but if you're cross shopping this vehicle with something like a Tesla Model 3, it has a lot of great quality and a lot of great physical controls that the Tesla is lacking. Plus that charge rate, if you can find an EA capable of dispensing well over 200 kW, is really, really impressive. My other big issue with this car is the price, 58 grand. 58.4 and some change on this car. It's getting a little up there and it doesn't qualify for the federal tax credit because of its assembly not here in the US. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of you watching. We'll see you in the next video.